Lemonade Mouth. That is the movie I'm going to be watching today. I had never watched this movie in my entire life, but from what I've heard, people really love this movie. And so for you guys who love this movie, I wanted to give it a shot. So let's go ahead and watch Lemonade Mouth. So this movie starts with one of our main characters basically having one of the biggest egos known to mankind. Poets, geniuses, revolutionaries. I wonder if they'd believe it if I told them that it all started right here. So we've immediately established in this movie that these are a successful group of people that are in a band together and the band is named Lemonade Mouth and apparently they've sold out some big venue so they're very successful things are going very well for them. Della Yamada lead guitar, Gwen Gifford keyboard, Mo Banjari bass, Charlie Delgado drum god and me Olivia White future frontman for Lemonade Mouth. How did all five of these talented musicians get detention at the same time together? Was there some sort of riot in band class? So the music teacher just so happens to be teaching detention this day and she goes on this rant about how they need to turn this room into a music room because they've been relegated to the basement. We are going to put those thumbs to use. We're gonna unpack and we're gonna turn this storage room into a music room. <laughs> But anyways, we've established that the music program is getting disrespected by the school, and now we've already had one flashback, but the movie's gonna throw us into a second flashback. That is it! But, I'm gonna tell you this right, I need to go back to the beginning. Hey man, did you just put a flashback in my flashback? I didn't put a flashback in your flashback. If there's any more flashbacks, you're the guy I'm looking for. I just want you to know that. Alright, no more flashbacks, jeez. So now we've been double flashback to the morning that it all began. I know this is hard. Transferring to a new school, a month into the year. Yeah. Then you and dad might have thought to ask me before you moved our family halfway across the country. Hello? Yes, Mr. Johnson. One thing that's going to be established very quickly into this movie is that most of these kids hate their parents and have a strained relationship with them for some reason or another. Have fun. Don't you think it's a little weird that your girlfriend's still in college? She's 28, Wen. And now we have Wen, another one of our main characters whose dad is dating someone who's still in college. And Wen is harboring some resentment towards his dad because his dad is dating this girl. Even though his dad said that she's a 28-year-old woman, Wen still has a problem with this. Give Sydney a chance. Why is everything about Sydney? You no, know, whatever, right? Let, let's just go. I'm gonna be late for my history presentation. So now we're two for two on our five main characters having a problem with their parents. tryouts are today. Oh, right. Yeah, I'm thrilled. And now we have Charlie, whose parents have an unfair expectation of him to do soccer tryouts, which he clearly doesn't want to do. Is that lipstick you're wearing? No, Baba. Because you're too young for that sort of thing. Oh my goodness, all five of these kids have something wrong with their parents. Stella's still working through some anger issues about moving. Yes, I can see that. There is an unwritten line. That shirt crosses it. What about freedom of expression? So Stella's wearing a shirt that says question authority with a question mark next to question. But I can't even tell what this shirt is saying. Does it say question authority or is it saying question authority? And while the principal's bragging about how good everyone follows the rules at the school and how she needs to also follow the rules, he finds Mo and her boyfriend walking around in the hallway while they're not supposed to be there. But because Mo is a good student, he decides not to call her father, but just gives her detention instead. Yeah. Check out Wynn's mommy. You must be Wendell's mother. She's not my mom, okay? Are, are you kidding me? Look at her! Right, are, are you stupid? So Wen couldn't give his history presentation in class because his dad's girlfriend had his folder. So she comes and brings it to him and everyone in the class just starts catcalling her and whistling at her like they've never seen an attractive woman before. <laughs> it's so weird. And then the teacher reasonably assumes that that's Wen's mother and then Wen stands up and goes, You think that's my mom? Are you kidding me? My mom is hideous. This woman is hot. And then Olivia gets detention in the weirdest way possible because she's reading a book in the janitor's closet. Delgado, come on, get with the program. <laughs> Delgado, you gotta kick the ball. Charlie's trying out for soccer and I think he totally forgot how to kick the ball because he's so infatuated with Mo over there with her boyfriend. He can't do side to side movement. He can't stop the ball. He can't kick the ball. Some would say he's never even seen a ball in his life. And then one of the bully guys kicks a ball into him and he's mad. He's so mad that while he's throwing the ball and talking, his mouth isn't moving. I don't want to play soccer. I don't want your abuse. I certainly don't want my brother's ball. I think he did that on purpose, coach. Mm. So because he hits Coach Caveman with the soccer ball, Coach Caveman goes, Arr. So now we know why all of our main characters got detention. So now the principal is giving a speech to the school in the auditorium about empowerment. To support the school's sponsor, Turbo Blast, which is a sports drink that is probably the reason why the music department's going under. So now because of this, Stella says, you want empowered students? Here you go. And this happens. Turbo Blast. All our coaches. My shirt! 
my decision. Everybody, the new girl's standing up again. Oh boy, here we go. Hey, don't let your school take away your right. Okay, be heard. Use your voice. Nobody knows what she's talking about. She just straight up stands up and starts talking about, hey, don't let schools take away your rights. Like, hey, yeah, I kind of get what she's saying. Don't let the school take away our rights. I got it, yeah, okay. So obviously now she also has detention. So now Stella is on her way down to the basement for detention. You lost? Oh, no, I'm Detention, just huh? Follow me. What is this place? This is the underground. Robotics club, J. Spear Society, chess club, ballet, and athletes, art club, even the school newspaper. Anything that doesn't fit Principal Brennigan's mold, You'll find it down here. How big is the basement? She goes down an elevator in the basement and then in the basement she goes down more stairs. Also there's like this EDM music playing in the basement. Hey welcome to the basement. We call this place the underground. Okay what's all down here? We've got chess club, art club, there's a club over there for people who think they're LARPers. Oh checkers club. People who think they're sorcerers go over there in that area. Oh that's really cool. What else should I be aware of down here? Well now that you mention it there is also a black market. Yeah they got everything you need. Test answers, pictures of the principal with his mistress if you need to get some dirt on him, you know what I mean? Human organs? There's human organs in the basement? Only kidneys, nothing crazy. Come on now, who do you think we are? I'm not sure how to feel about this. Oh, and there's also a live eagle in there, so you should probably be careful. A live eagle? Oh no, here it comes. Watch out. Ah, I'm being attacked by an eagle. So while they're all making their way down to detention, they all run into this lemonade machine, and before they go into detention, they all grab one of them. It's kind of funny that all five of them did it, but they all five grab a lemonade out of this machine. And for some reason, the first time they're all drinking this, it looks like they all have a disgusted look on their face, like they hate the drink for some reason. Yeah, like they, all of them hate the drink. They're doing it. They're doing the stomp thing. I used to love watching stomp when they'd show it in school as a kid. That's totally what they're doing here. And then all five of them, unrehearsed, unchoreographed, just happened to make a beautiful song together. How did they get it first try? I have no clue. Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, I have no clue how they came up with the whole song immediately. And the music teacher comes back from wherever the heck she is and she says, wow, that was amazing. Olivia, you have a beautiful voice. You are meant to play together. Okay, no more caffeine for the music teacher, everybody. She's clearly had way too much today. They played one song and she's in here saying, people need to see this. This is a revolution. You are geniuses, poets, revolutionaries. Oh, okay, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. So they decide the entire fate of their band on a coin flip and it ends up landing on heads. So they decide we're going to do a band. We're going to do this band thing. So now the next step is they need to get a song ready to open for this other band at the Halloween bash. And I know they perfectly improv a song a few minutes ago, but that just ain't going to work again. Okay, this is I'm out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm out too. They're quitters! Shut up, Stella. Things aren't going too well, and right before this band begins, it may come crashing to a screeching halt. And Lemonade Mouth may never exist. Wait a minute, what's that noise? Yeah, so that entire fight they just had stops immediately once Wen and Olivia start playing music and everyone grabs their instruments again and starts singing all together and they perfectly all of a sudden nail the song. These five people have a pretty magical way of performing a song perfectly only when everything's falling apart and there's no reason for them to actually be able to do it. But when they're practicing and trying really hard, all of a sudden they can't do it at all. Anyway, so they're all feeling really good now because they have their song for the show. Olivia, did you really write that? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously she wrote the song. That was the whole plan. So now that Limited Mouth exist as a band and they're gonna be opening for the other band which is actually Moe's boyfriend's band. His band is kind of pissed off because he thinks that Lemonade Mouth is stealing all of their spotlight. So now basically this group is the rival band and what do they sing about in their first song here? Well I don't know let's find out. I'm a superstar. Yep, he says, I'm a superstar and I've got a cool car and everyone's dancing like you are a superstar. Oh, I just absolutely love being degraded by my favorite musicians. But the song really sucks. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, the song's awful. So now the rival band gets into it with our main characters and then Stella spits lemonade all over one of the guys from the other band. When the principal comes over to ask what happened, that guy from the other band goes, Lemonade Mouth spat all over me or something like that. And then that's how they get their band name. So pretty creative stuff there. So Wynn goes over to Olivia's house to work on some songs with her and then he sees her old cat. Wow, that is an old cat. Wow, that is an old cat. How old is that cat? Is that cat 22 years old? Because that cat looks really old. Nancy was my mom's. It's kind of like the last thing I've left. Oh. Sorry. Boo! Nice going, Wen. Go run back to your mommy because you just said something so mean to Olivia without even knowing it. So basically, this guy can't win. <laughs> Get it? His name is Win. He can't win. <laughs> That's a stupid joke. 
So as they're going to rehearse one day, they realize the lemonade machine is scheduled for removal, so they need to go to the office and figure out what the heck's going on here. I'd like to know what's happening to the lemonade machine in the basement. There's a lemonade machine down there? So the office confirms that this lemonade machine is getting taken out of the school. And then Wynn goes home and wonders what all these boxes are doing everywhere. What's all this? Sydney stuff. I know this has been tough for you. It makes me happy, Wynn. And I've asked her to marry me. So when, much like all the other characters in this movie, is having daddy issues, and those daddy issues are inspiring him to speak up more with the band. I get the divorce can be really hard on a kid because I went through the same thing, but at the same time, I get like being happy for your parents too. Like this lady in the movie seems like a really nice lady. I don't know why he has a reason to like not like her other than the fact that she's a little bit younger, but now it's time for the Halloween bash. She promised she'd be here. Maybe she's got held up. So now they're looking for Olivia and they're panicking. They can't find her. They're 10 minutes before they go on and their sound equipment has been sabotaged by the rival band and the rival band's trying to get their whole set back and get back on stage and they're trying to sweet talk the principal well, uh, we got two sets ready we'd be uh, happy to go on early and cover so now olivia's in the bathroom getting understandably nervous so the whole band goes in there and tries to give her a pep talk we've rehearsed these songs a million times i'm ready the power of the lemonade got them all on stage together and when they first get on there the crowd absolutely loves them uh, nice costumes. Oh, you're not wearing any? Yeah, for some reason there's a really big group of people booing them and not giving them a single chance even though they've never heard them. They probably don't even know who these people are. But all of that changes after they do an amazing job and everybody really loves it. <laughs> the song's pretty good. I have no complaints about it. It's not like the best song ever, but it's definitely a good song. I found it being stuck in my head every single time I listen to it for more than a few seconds and it's probably gonna get stuck in my head again doing this video. <laughs> And then Wynn absolutely out of nowhere just starts dropping these bars, man. That line about going into their house and they're smiling like they had lemons in their mouth. My goodness, dude, that is a hard line for some re for some reason. I love that. It looks like we got some competition at Rising Star, man. So after they're done with their song, Stella gets on the mic and gives an impassioned speech about saving the lemonade machine downstairs in the basement. And I feel like everybody would really care if anyone actually knew that thing existed down there. <laughs> Machine in the basement is scheduled for removal to help pay for this gymnasium. But nonetheless, she's saying we need to save the lemonade machine, and everyone's like, heck yeah, we need to save this lemonade machine. And somehow they're passing out hundreds of lemonades. If the school didn't know it was there for eight plus years, I don't think there's anybody there to stock the machine. <laughs> Then they're singing by far the worst song in the entire movie. This school is very accepting of things they don't understand. Earlier they were clapping when Stella stood up with her shirt hole situation and showed her shirt and was like, hey everyone, I like my shirt by the way. And everyone was like, okay, cool, we support that. And now they're supporting this lemonade machine they didn't know existed. But the principal doesn't like this message, so he turns off their music in the middle of the song. Lemonade mouth is finished. If I hear so much as a hum, I will suspend you. So the principal has shut down their music. He says no more lemonade mouth, but they've sort of become celebrities in the school. And everywhere they go and everywhere they walk, people are really excited to see them. So they realize if we can't play in the high school, we gotta figure out a spot to play. What would you say if uh, we told you we could play again? The principal Brennigan, he can tell us we can't play at school, but he can't tell us not to play here. And a few of them are having a hard time deciding whether or not to make this a real gig until they walk outside and they see a poster hanging from the restaurant. And by seeing that sign, they get the motivation to actually start the real gig at the pizza place. And this next song in this movie, by far and away, trumps every other song. We were ready to be heard. Go! And I really love this song. I have it on my Spotify, and I'm not afraid to say that. If I was just a single guy in high school and Naomi Scott pulled that stuff on me, I'd absolutely be smiling as well. So everyone's wondering where Olivia is the next day and she's nowhere to be found, so they go to her house to look for her. And it turns out she's really sad because her 27 and a half year old cat died. I don't know his age, I'm just making it up because he looks wow. so dang old. And then they all start venting about their feelings, which is an understandable thing to do. You guys are really close now. So every single one of them says something about their family that they wish was different. When is the last guy before Olivia to say what he wants better about his family? And this is how it goes again. Take perfect brother any day over my dad's ridiculous girlfriend. Oh, my dad's in prison. Way to go, Wynn. Way to make fun of her dad who's in prison. I know you already made fun of her old cat. Maybe you can make fun of it again because it's dead now, Wynn. Come on. In all seriousness, Wynn can't catch a break. Every time he tries to be supportive, whether it's in a group or by himself, it seems like Olivia has something to say where it just completely shatters him and all he's trying to do is be supportive. But it's really not that big a deal and they all start singing to make her feel better and then they play another song because that's how this group gets along, you know? People have their own coping mechanisms and theirs is playing music. Come on, you've got to hear this. Yes! Yes! 
they're playing our song. And not only were they already kind of becoming popular in school, but now they're becoming popular outside of school as well. And everything is going so well until the rival band blonde haired guy who's a bully decides to try to bully them even though they've already gotten popularity. Losers! May I uh, introduce Loser Mouth? And the only dick he can come up with is Loser Mouth, which makes no sense. And suddenly out of nowhere, everyone starts throwing red cups at the band. Is this the most gullible town in all of America? And it made no sense because the band didn't do anything wrong. And all of a sudden everyone just started throwing red cups at them. So I'm not sure why that happened, but I'm sure somehow they'll get blamed for it. But anyways, that's just Disney Channel original movie logic for you. And so Charlie's walking Mo home. And if I haven't made this clear in the earlier parts of the video, Charlie has a really big crush on Mo and it keeps growing in this entire movie. And he finds Finally tells her how he feels. I like you, Mo. I said it. We're just friends, Charlie. Fine. Please. No, you know what? He heard. It's a stupid song. But instead of him taking it gracefully and being like, okay, I understand. Like, I mean, it is her choice, right? It's her choice, yes or no. But no, she politely declines, and then he gets really mad and is like, fine. You know what? That song about being heard and speaking up about yourself and loving yourself, I'm never singing that song again. And then Mo deals with her father, who's trying to confront her, and she finally stands up to him. And then Charlie's angry, drumming on his drums, and he breaks one of his drumsticks, and everybody just getting out their anger and all of a sudden all these crazy injuries start happening the day before this final show is supposed to happen oh. Literally everyone ends up having a reason why they can't play at Rising Star. So now the vending machine is being removed from the school and Stella is going out there to make sure that they put a stop to it. I am protesting the removal of our Mel's lemonade machine. You're kidding me, right? In this weather? Mo says, you're kidding me, right? In this weather? And it's so clearly sunny outside and there's no rain falling from the sky at all. It's gonna rain. Let's get out of here. Aww. You move or I move you. The moving guy said it's gonna rain and right as he says that, it immediately starts dumping the heaviest rain I've ever seen. And then the craziest thing I did not expect expect happens. Hey, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, our heroes assault the two moving men that are just there to move the vending machine. They have nothing to do with its removal except for the fact that their job is to get it out of there. That's not what I expected from this movie. That's I'll say that right now. I did not expect that one. It's not every day that you're watching a Disney Channel movie and all of a sudden all the characters end up in jail. Lemonade Mouth is bigger than a competition. We did it to be heard for our fans. Stella sounds like she's getting a little bit too confident right now. They're still a relatively small band. They're not big yet, you know what I'm saying? But then the spirit of Stomp comes alive in them again and they decide to ban together and make another song out of nowhere. Man, these kids won't quit. Every time they're down, all of a sudden they randomly start singing a song together and they're all fine again. When I said get out of the house, this isn't what I meant. When I said get out of the house, I meant hang out with friends, not assault moving companies. But either way, all of them have really emotional sweet talks with their family and they start working things out, which is really great for all of their characters. Stood up for what you believed in. I'm sorry. Any prouder. Is someone cutting onions in here? I feel like there's someone cutting onions in this room right here. Now that I've gathered myself, it's time for Rising Star. And the first band to lead off in this show is the rival band that played that one really crappy song earlier that was really pretentious and narcissistic. Yeah, that's those guys. But this next song's totally different. It's not anything like the last one. <laughs> I personally don't get how anybody likes any of the songs that this band puts out or how they got popular in the first place. They're basically just saying you suck. But anyways, yeah, this song sucks and the lyrics suck as well. And now it's time for Lemonade Mouth to go out there, but remember they're injured and they're sick. Talk that. Oh, we will. So Lemonade Mouth goes out on stage and essentially just completely wrecks it. They're doing awful and everybody is just kind of like standing there awkwardly while they're there struggling and things are not going well. Okay, where are you going? They need help, man. So Mo's sort of ex-boyfriend realizes that they're crashing and burning on stage and he gets his guitar to go out and help. No, no, no. You do that, man, and you're out of the band. But he decides to go out there anyway. And while all the band is walking off the stage, something unexpected happens. Trying hard to fight these tears. Messing with, with my, my head, head this fear. I'll find another band. And the entire audience, along with Mo's boyfriend slash ex-boyfriend and Stella, start playing the whole song by themselves and singing it. And there is something so cool about that. I wanna Everyone stands up and is singing and it's the coolest thing that you are ever gonna see. Every time it happens, I'm such a sucker for it in every movie. Hey, Charlie. Hey. So Charlie sees that Mo's happy and he actually isn't pissed about it anymore, which is really great. And he's moved on and then he sees this cute blonde haired girl and then she calls him over and he goes and talks to her. So he's gonna get himself a girlfriend as well. And then we've also got Wen here who gets Olivia a new cat because her other one was so freaking old. Was he like 47 or something? I can't remember. Wen's dad also gets married and everyone's there at it. And everyone has accepted his girlfriend as an awesome woman who really is actually a good person. And while they're at the wedding, Stella is sitting next to this random guy, but then she really 
realize is he's the owner of Mel's Lemonade, the guy who put the lemonade stand in the basement. Let me ask you something, Mel. He's more than happy to help us build a place where all our voices could be heard. So Mel, the owner of the company that owned the lemonade stand in the basement, ends up buying the auditorium for them so that they can have a really nice place for music people to play and have a full music program. And now everyone can have lemonade at the school at all times. And that, Dad, is how Lemonade Mouth came to be. Love, Olivia. So that's a really cool twist at the end of the movie. She's actually been writing this whole thing. All the narration has been a letter to her dad in prison, which is a really cool twist on the end of this movie. I did not expect it to go that way. And it turns out that they've ended up actually selling out Madison Square Garden, which is one of the biggest and most renowned venues in the entire country. And honestly, at this point in their band's existence, I think that would be practically impossible to do, but they do it anyway. So let's just ignore that. And the movie ends with a really fun song. <laughs> The visuals in the background are really cool, and Wynn drops some more bars, and I mean, honestly, go for it, dude. Well, thank you for watching Lemonade Mouth with me. This was actually a really good movie. I enjoyed watching it, even though there's a lot of silly moments in it. I think it was actually, overall, a really great movie, and I can see why so many people really like it. You know, the nostalgic Disney movie for me was Camp Rock, but the nostalgic movie for you guys may be Lemonade Mouth. But I'm almost out of time today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll enjoy my movie playlist where I've talked about some other movies so far on my channel at this point. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.